this section, I just want to pull everything together. We've talked about two major biological groups in the soil. So that's your bacteria and your fungi. And typically we want to see for grassland ecosystems that you have equal biomass of both bacteria and fungi for real health. So bacteria play a very important role in terms of the small, small aggregates. They are breaking stuff down. They're making antibiotics. Very important in our nitrogen cycle. They're one of the organisms that help to form humus. And they're also what gives soil some of their healthy smell. Now, remembering that they eat the more simple foods, so simple sugars, simple proteins, things like sugar, molasses, fruit juice even, not that you're going to do that, but maybe something like a milk is going to feed our bacteria and archaea. Uh, grass clippings, many of our practices, so nitrogen fertilizers, all of those things are going to help to stimulate bacteria and archaea. On the other side, we have our fungi, and the main groups that we talk about are the saprophytes, so those that are decomposing, and then our mycorrhizal fungi. So they are the primary decomposers. Uh, we wanna see them breaking all that organic material down and making the large macro aggregates and creating the conditions for optimal nitrogen cycling. Without that macro aggregate formation, we don't get a very functional nitrogen cycle at all. It's a little bit like the rhizobia in a legume. We see that this is the reactor um, in that aggregate, that soil crumb for nitrogen fixation. And when we lose that, we lose nitrogen working at all. Um, so fungi are also producing acids to help release these locked up minerals. And what's really interesting is they also, as they're building some of these soil structures, they can also be building rocks in a process called geomycology. So sometimes when we're thinking about carbon drawdown is fungi can do that and put carbon down into rocks so that that carbon is actually sequestered permanently. Part of what fungi are doing too is as they work through that soil environment, they're building chitin, which is concentrated carbon. They also take some of that hydrogen and that oxygen in organic materials, they combine that and they're releasing water. So when we're looking at improving our water use efficiencies, feeding fungi is critical. So feeding them our more complex materials. So we talked about a range of things that we could use to feed them, but also thinking about how if we look at plant succession or where plants sit on a successional pathway, depending on disturbance, highly disturbed environments, even bare rock is where we're going to see our bacteria and our archaea. And then what will happen is that soil starts to build over time as we see dust particles collecting, we see soil starting to form under that organic material, and we get things like moss and lichens, so the very beginning building blocks of soil. So if you have a lot of moss in your soil environment um, and in your grassland, then it's telling you that you are in really, really primitive conditions and potentially that soil isn't breathing. Right Over time, as we have less disturbance, we we'll start to see what we call the scrambling annual species. Then you might start to see deep rooted tap species. So these might be your thistles or your dock or your um, dandelions. They like this environment. Then that soil starts to advance further along. We'll start to see annual grasses. Next come in our perennial species. And for most people operating and managing parks, this is the sweet spot. And you'll see that based on this chart, that we need to see a one-to-one -one fungi to bacteria ratio or even slightly more fungi in this environment, right? So the biology determines the plants, the plants determine the biology, right? They work hand in hand. If we continue to have no disturbance and let's say there were no people on our grounds anymore, what you might start to see is the encroachment of our woody shrubs or woody invasive type species. Uh, then it might tend towards deciduous plants and then into trees. So this is what we call a disturbance timeline. So where in this timeline are you currently managing for? And you can use your refractometer to take a look at this. So measure the invasive weeds maybe that you have, measure the grass that you'd like to have. And what you'll find is typically um, the weeds are photosynthesizing higher. It's telling you that you are on more of a bacterial continuum than what's ideal for what you want in park management. So take a look, compare your weeds to your ideal plants. 
Where are you right now? How do we get back into that sweet spot so that we do have optimal health and performance?